October 8, 12th. Welcome to Life Science. And today, we're going to have a look at monohybrid crosses. Now, this is where the interesting part comes in, in your genetics, right? Because this shows you how we become the way we are. Okay, so let's have a look. at <clears throat> Whenever we start, of course, we start with a, a bunch of, of terminology, right? And I want you to give me the meanings of the following words, right? So let's have a look at the words, and you'll notice words that you see all the time, right? So first, first one, haploid, then we've got diploid, we have genotype, phenotype, P1, F1, monohybrid, and dihybrid. Now, a lot of these you've seen before, right? And some of them are new. I want you, well, for me and you, that, that is new. So I want you to give me the definition of these things, and I'm going to give you, let's see, there's two, four, six, eight. I'm going to give you two minutes, and make sure you give me everything. You ready? Off you go. Cool, let's have a look what we came up with. Okay, firstly, oh, come on, today would be good. There we go, <laughs> there we go. Let's have a look. Firstly, haploid, a nucleus that contains a single set of unpaired chromosomes. Can you remember that? Okay, these are simple, simple ones. <laughs> then we come to diploid, right? Diploid is a nucleus that contains two complete, remember, complete sets of chromosomes. Very, very important. You need to know that. Okay, those, the, those are the two that are so simple from, from the beginning. Let's carry on. Next one, genotype. Okay, remember, it's the composition of genetic material that you inherited from your parents. Okay, so that means um, your genes inside, right? And then, of course, you got your phenotype. Phenotype is your physical features. So your physical features. In other words, for example, your hair color, as we put, put here. So because you are blonde, you, that's what you see. Your genes make you blonde, but what do I see? The color of your hair. Okay, so your phenotype comes from what your genotype is. How cool is that? Eh? Now, next one we're having a look at is your P1 and your F1 generation. Okay, and the nice, the best way to always think about this is P1. P for parents, the first set of parents. So it's the first parent generation. Okay, if I have a look at the F1, it is the offspring. So F1 is the first offspring generation. And there it is, the first offspring generation. So if I said to you, what is P2? 
P2 and F2, just think about it, your F1s become your P2s when we're doing these crosses. Okay, so don't forget it. That makes the F2s the grandchildren of the P1s. Okay, that's quite cool and simple, hey? Now let's have a look at the next monohybrid and dihybrid crosses. That's what we are going to mess around with today. Well, one of them, the monohybrid cross. And that is a cross involving a single, remember that, a single set of traits. In other words, hair color. Okay? When we look at di, meaning two, then we have a cross involving two sets or two traits, two different traits, hair color and, of course, eye color. Okay? Now, you've got to understand, when we do this one set of traits, okay, we're going to come up with four different things or four different, it could, could be the same, but four variants. Okay? But the minute you put more than that, Let's say two, two traits, you're going to come up with 16. And if you put more than that, you're going to come up with more, like a lot every time. So make sure that you know the difference. Okay, so let's have a look. Next one. Okay, what I have in front of me is an example of a genetic cross. Okay, and this is quite simple. I know that it jumps very quickly. And we've got the P1, as you can see it, is the P1 generation. And we have the... F1 generation. And what it's saying here, it's very simple. If this person, if it took a white flower, okay, and it took a pink flower, and they crossed them, in other words, they pollinated them, and out came all pink flowers, it tells me that there's this thing called dominant and recessive, okay? Dominant dominates the recessive gene. Okay, so dominant, dominant, dominates the recessive G. These are quite simple, right? These are easy to remember. And then, in this case, they went and crossed the offspring. And if they cross the offspring, you will notice, if I go down there again, in this case, we had three pink and one white. Now, if that is the case, okay, which it is, please tell me, is this the genotype or the phenotype of the plant? Think about it. Genotype or phenotype? It's the phenotype, the physical features. Okay? How cool is that? The physical features, very, very important. Genotype is what they're made up of. And we're going to look how to work with the genotypes in the next couple of things. Okay, so let's change. Now, over here, you've got a monohybrid cross. And if we have a look at it, this is a very, very famous monohybrid cross. Okay, this was done by a man that's very important. Can you remember? His name is Mendel, okay? So Mendel did this cross, and he did it with the peas. And if we have a look at this peas, he had two different types, okay? He had a green pea, which is over here, and he had a yellow pea, which is over here. Now, if you look underneath it, they've got those two letters, okay? And in this case, it had the green pea as two A's. Can you see it there? Two capital A's, and over here, two small A's, okay? Which means, remember, we had a look at these words called um, mono and um, hetero. So, a, ho, sorry, homo and het hetero. Homo meaning the same and hetero meaning different. Okay? Now, in this case, the green pea is homozygous, which means homo the same. And the, uh, the yellow pea is also homozygous because it had the same. If you have, what, what I mean by the same is that the yellow pea had two small A's and the green pea, two big A's. Okay, so now let's go back down there. And if we have a look, you see over here you've got a big A and a big A, and there you have a small A or a small A. Now, what this means is that this one, this pea over here, went through a process called mitosis. Uh, uh, meiosis. So we split them up. Can you see how we split them up? And that's why we've got this or sign. Can you see the or? We split them up. And that gave you your gametes. Each one of those are your gametes. Okay? So if we have a look at this, when you mix them all together, you're going to get this thing called a complete gene. And over here, if you look at them, all of them are big A, small a. 
And I'm going to show you how that works in a few seconds. If we have a look at it, here I'll do it again. It's A, A, or let's say OR, and we have crossed with small A and, I always put and there, small A, it makes it easier. Let me raise this one quickly, right, come on. There we go, let me raise this one quickly so we can try that again. Okay, we have A, big A, and big A, and we're gonna cross it, okay, we're gonna cross it with small A, small A. Now what happens is I take that A, crosses with that A, and I'm gonna get a capital A, come on, work with me, and a small A, and I'm gonna take that one, and I'm gonna cross it with that one, and I'm gonna get A, big A, and A, small A. So this is and, this is what I'm gonna get with. Then I'm gonna change color so we can see, I'm gonna take that one, and I'm gonna cross it with that one, and I'm gonna take that one, and I'm gonna cross it with that one. And all of them I'm gonna get big A, small A, big A, small A. Okay, so that's the, a different one. And if you look at it, they're all the same. Big A, small A, big A, small A, big A, small A, big A, small A. Can you see it? So that's why they only put one in there. Can you see it? They only put one. Okay? And at the end, we've made these. We said that we're going to cross these together. We're going to take a big A and a small A, and we're going to cross it with a big A and a small A. And this is what you're going to end up with. Okay? Now, that there is what we need to look at. We want to have a look at the F2 generation. This is the P1 generation. Okay, uh, P2 generation. Now, we need to go into detail with this. This is the important parts. Okay, and in this case, we got this thing here, 3 to 1. Let's see how that worked. Okay, so we had... A big A and a small A crossed with a big A and a small A, okay? If I had to make a cross, so I'm going to do it here. So you can see exactly how we did it, okay? We had this one crossing with this one. Can you see? So I'm going to take this one and put it there, and I'm take this one and put it there. And it is big A, small A, and it's big A, and it's small A. And I'm going to end up with big A, big A. I'm going to end up with big A, small a, end up with big A, small a, and I'm going to end up with small a, small a. Let's see if that's everything we had. Big A, big A. Can you see it? There it is. Okay. Big A, small a, big A, small a. There's two of them. And a, big A, small a. Okay. Can you see that? Now, remember when I said, say to you over here, what color was this? Green. If it's a big A, small a, it's a green. It means it looks like this green one here. Can you see it? So we have three big A's and one small a. So we have heterozygous. Let me change the color here. We have a heterozygous. We have a heterozygous. Let me put het. Okay. Yeah, we have a homo. And yeah, we have a homo. Can you see how that, that works? Okay, now I know that seems difficult, right? It's not as bad as you think. You need a break, I need a break. And when we get back, we're gonna start going into this because I wanna get to as many examples as I possibly can to make sure that you understand it. Because this here, this is money, well, marks for nothing, should I say, okay? If you follow specific rules and specific steps, you can get full marks for this and it becomes easy, but only if you concentrate, okay? I'll see you straight after this break. Welcome back. Now, let me show you how to get marks for nothing. Okay, now, I'm going to show you a couple of steps. If you follow these steps, word for word, you cannot get them wrong, and you get marks for doing it. Okay, so let's have a look at it. I don't have red, but I have got pink. So, I'm going to show you how to do it. And every time I mark, I'm going to write in blue and I'm going to mark in pink at the end. Let's do it that, that way. Okay, so let's say I look at my, my phenotypes of the P1 generation. Okay, phenotypes, let's say um, black and white. No, they always use black and white. So let's, so let's go black and white. So phenotype, physical feature. So let's have a look at this. I must put P1 generation, have to put it, have to put the phenotypes. And I'm going to take... A black, 
let's see if we have enough space, a, a black cow and a white cow. You happy with that? That is phenotype, physical features, what I see. Okay, now, this is where it comes very, very important, okay? If they do not tell you which letters to use, you may use your own, okay? But I want you to think about this very carefully. You always try and take the dominant letters for both dominant and recessive. Except when the letters of the dominant is the capital and the small look the same. So let's have a look on the board here at a couple ones that look, look the same. So tell me the difference between that and that. Or what about that and that? Doesn't work, does it? Or that and that. Can you see the difference? Can you tell me which is capital or recessive? Okay, cap capital or, or small letters? You can't. So you always use the things like A's, right? And you use T's, and you use I's, or you use L's. Okay, can, can you understand where I'm coming from? Try use letters that um, you can see the difference. Okay, definitely ones that you can see the difference. So let's go have a look at this again. Okay, so we've done the phenotype, black and white. Physically, what I see, very important. Okay, so then genotypes, I'm going to make both of these homozygous. In other words, I'm going to make them both purebred. Okay, and if that is the case, and I'm going to say black is dominant over white. Okay, I'm going to say big B, because I've used the capital letter of the dominant color. Big B, big B, because homo means the same. And I'm going to cross it with a white cow. And remember, which is dominant? The black, therefore white will have two small b's, because we took the letters of the dominant. Can you remember I said that? Okay? Take the letters of the dominant. Then, don't forget, you need to put genotype. Follow this structure, and you will get marks. Then you need to put this big word here, okay? Meiosis. Because when you go through meiosis, you make a specific thing, and you get marks for saying meiosis. And then you get marks for saying gametes. Okay? Because that is what meiosis does. It gives you gametes. Okay? So now let's see the gametes of this. Okay? The gametes are, we need to split this. Remember meiosis splits things, and we split it. So let's have a look. Here, big B and big B. And of course, small b and small b. There's your gametes. Once gametes have been made, once the gametes have been made, then we need to put a sperm with an egg. Because remember, each gamete goes into a specific sperm. Now we need to take the sperm and the egg and we need to fuse them together. And when an egg and, and sperm fuse, what do we call it? Fertilization. So let's have a look here. Fertilization happens. There it is. Fer fertilization happens. There's a big word. And I'm going to show you two different ways. I'm going to show you one that a lot of people use. I don't like it. And that's my personal experience, or, or opinion, should I say. I don't like like this way, but it is seen, and you can use it, and you won't get it wrong if you use it. So understand where it is? So I'm going to do it that way first. And I did it just, just now already for you. Okay, so here we go. We need to take, let me use black this time. We need to take that one and that one. And we need to join them together, and it's going to make a big B and a small B. Can you see it? Okay. Then I need to take that one and that one. And I'm going to make a big B and a small B. Can you see it? Okay. And I'm going to take the pink to change the color around so you can see. I'm going to take that B and put it over there. And it's got to go with that small B. And I'm going to end up with a big B and a small B. And I'm going to take that B and I'm going to join it with this B. And I'm going to get a big B and a small B. Okay. Have you noticed something? Have a look at this. Have you noticed? We're going to end off with something quite stranger. The F1 generation, don't forget to put it down. The F1 generation genotype is 100, or should I put it here, 100% big B, small b. The genotype. Can you see it? That's it. 100 percent 
big B, small b. In this case, can you put a ratio? No, you can't put a ratio. If I look at the phenotype, what is a phenotype? 100% black. Can you see it? Now I've given everything. Now, watch this. Look how cool this is. Um, yeah, there we go. Watch this. I get a mark for that, and I get a mark for that, and I can get a mark for that. I can get a mark for that, for that. Telling you what the genotypes is, okay? You can get a mark for each one of these things if you want, okay? You can get a mark for each one of these things with ease. Let me go up. You can get a mark for meiosis. You get a mark for genotype. You get a mark for phenotype. You get a mark for P1 generation. Do you understand how many marks you can get? How's this? If you just fill this out without putting any of this down, any of this down, you can get one, two, three, four, five, let's see, six, seven, eight marks. Eight marks for nothing you could get, depending on what they want. Okay, so make sure you give me everything. It is very, very important to give me everything. So guys, make sure you write this formula down all the time. Okay, now, we need to have a look at what we have here. Okay, this is another one. Now remember, I said I'm going to do the one and then I'm going to do the other for you. So I'm going to do it here again. Oh, what am I doing now? I'm just going to go with that. Okay, remember the phenotype was black. Going black again. Black and white. Okay, remember big B, small B. Oh, big B, big B. Uh, now I'm going big Bs again. Come on. Small b, small b. This is all the same as what I did earlier, remember? And yes, I've already put all of these things down. It's just to save time so that we can talk, right? Okay, and remember, you've got to go to your gametes. You've got to go through meiosis, do your fertilization, and then you have your gametes. And now your gametes is here. Big B, big B. So I chose that one. Okay, and then small b, small b. Can you see it? Then I did this one. Can you see how they do? And now I just fill in the blocks. I take this one with this one to get here. So it's big B, capital always comes first, small b. Then I do this one and this one, big B and small b. And if I have a look, see the big B? I bring the big B down here. I see the big B, I put the big B down here. I take, see the small b, I put the small b down here. And I see the small b and I put the small b down here. Have you noticed? It's identical to the other one. And I find this a lot easier. So I use this thing called Punnett squares, that's what it is, okay? And if we have a look here, it's again 100% genotype big B, small b, and this one is 100, so let me just say 100%, okay, and 100%, and it is black. It's quite cool, huh? These are the simple ones. These are the easy, easy things. This is marks for nothing, for nothing. Okay, so... Let's see if I've got an example for you. I do. How cool is that? Let's see. <laughs> Let me get a nice... No, yeah, we'll go for purple. We haven't done that for a while. Okay. Sheep, homozygous. And I'm just going to highlight all the important stuff. First thing, a sheep is homozygous. Okay. Which means it's homo. The two are the same. It means it's a pure bread. Okay. And it's white wool. We're happy with this. White wool. Then we have... It's crossed... With a homozygous, so that means it's another purebred, right? Which one? Black wool. Okay, so all they've given to me is you've got a homozygous white, homozygous black. Okay, then it said all the offspring are white. Ooh, all the offspring are white. Can you remember the first one that we did earlier? Can you remember the first, first one we did earlier? The one, the one I just, just did. What did they all come out as? Okay, let's, let's have a look. It's exactly the opposite of what I've just done. Okay, so let's, let's see. Use the letter B, big B, so use, use the letter big B, use the letter small B, representing a genetic cross, show the results. And then second of all, show the expected results of the F1 were to 
interbreed. The F1 would interbreed. Okay, now, I'm going to give you two minutes for this. I expect some good answers. Okay, two minutes. Let's see what you can come up with. Off you go. Let's see how you did. Now remember, to save me time, I've written down all the information that you need first. Okay, so let's have a look. Here it is. Homozygous sheep, black and white. All uh, the offspring that come out are all white. You need to tell me what the offspring are of the F, if the, off, if the F1 generation have been inbred. Okay, cool. So let's see. First thing I've noticed, don't forget my P1 generation. Okay, and the P1, and it said, make sure you use capital B for dominant. There it is. Use the capital B and the small letter representing your genetic crosses. Okay, I know that the second, when they all come out, the dominant has to be shown. And if the dominant is showing, that means they'll all have a capital letter, which is B. That, a uh, cap, capital B. And if it's a capital B, think about it. In this case, it's white. So what is white? White is the capital B. So here we go. We have the first one. Phenotype is white. Oh, that's terrible. Come on. Okay. Oh, uh, now I'm spelling very badly as well. Okay, white and crosses with black. Okay, cool. And then you got your genotype, big B, big B. Uh, and then this one, of course, uh, without even thinking, this one is small b, small b. Now, why didn't I use w? Can you remember? Okay, tell me which is the difference in the w's. You can't tell me, can you? That's why we use the b, the capital B of the black. Cool, okay. Went through meiosis and fer fertilization, and we ended off with the following. We had big b, big b, small b, small b and they all ended up with big b small b big b small b big b small b and big b small b okay which means the genotype was 100 percent big b small b and the phenotype is 100 percent what is that white we all understand that okay so that is just the F1 generation. They said you had to inbreed the F1 generation. Okay, I just got to finish this before we go to a break. I know that you're thinking about it. The F1 generation, remember, F1, once they become parents, they become P2s, the parent twos. 
What do the parents want? Remember, it is white, and I'm crossing it with a white one. Remember, both the offspring, were, all those offspring are white, remember. And the cross was big B, small b, and big B, small b. That was its genotype. Can you remember? Okay. Remember, got to go through meiosis, got to go through fertilization, and uh, your yeah, fertilization, and what are we going to end up with the gametes? The gametes are a big B and a small b. We're going to end up with a big B and a small b. Now watch this, just to make it easier. We're just going to move in that direction first, just to make it easier for you guys. Okay, so we see there's a big B and there's a big B. Can you see them? It's all big Bs there. And yeah, they'll all be, let me put small b and small b. We're all happy. Then we move across. From there, there should be another big B here. And across, there should be another big B there. Can you see it? Cool. The bottom, small b and small b. Ooh, what do we have here? Let's have a look. This is quite cool. Okay. When it comes to the genotype, I have, and I'm going to use both the ratio this time and the percentages. Okay. Let's use the percentages first. Okay. I have a 25 percent, okay, 25 percent, big B, big B. Can you see that? There's 25. Then I have, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to write skew, so please understand how I'm going to go. Then I have a 50 percent, okay, 50 percent, big B, small B. Can you see it? There's one of the, out of the four, there's one, there's two. Can you see there's two of them? So it's 50, and I'm going to be left with 25% big B, oh, small b, small b. Can you see how that works? Or I have a ratio. Let's have a look at the ratio. I have a ratio 1, 1 big B, big B, to 2 big B, small b's, to 1. Small b, small b. There's my ratio. How cool is that? Let's have a look at the bottom one. I just want to extend this page so we've got place to write. Come on. There we go. Okay. And the other ratio was phenotype. How many whites? How many uh, blacks? Okay. It's very simple. We have a 75% white because it was a dominant color. Okay. And a 25% percent black, which means our ratio is 3 to 1. In other words, 3 white, I um, forgot to write it, 3 white, 2, 1, black. That was easy, hey. You need a break, I need a break. Go on, have a quick one, we'll see you soon. Cheers. Welcome back. Now, I've got another one. Let's go through this one. And this is very similar, so let's see what you can do. Okay, it says, in mice, black hair is dominant over white. Ooh, guess what? We've just changed it. Okay, if a purebred black mouse is crossed with a purebred white mouse, what color would the mice of the F1 generation be? That's the first one. And second one, if the F1 generation were allowed to breed with the white Ooh, the white-haired parent, what would the color and the, genet uh, and the genotype of the mouse in the F2 generation be? Show all working out, very important. Okay, I'm going to give you two minutes. I know you're quick enough to do this. Are you ready? Off you go.
sure you enjoyed that. Let's have a look at what, what we got. Okay, look at the board. If the purebred black mouse was crossed with the purebred white mouse, what color would the mice of the F1 generation be? And of course, I'm not going to do the whole cross, even though you have to. Don't forget, you need to do it. I'm quickly going to give you the answers. And remember, I said purebred black is dominant. Therefore, it would be black. Simple and easy. Okay, next one. If the F1 mouse was allowed to breed with a black head, didn't I say white hair in the beginning? Let's just have a look there quickly. I'm sure it was white hair. Um, allowed to mess with a white hair. Okay, so I'm going to change that to make sure because you guys had it. So I'm going to change that to white hair with the white. Cross that one out and put white. Okay, the white head parent. What would the color of the genotype of the mouse in the F2 generation be? Let's see. Phenotype. Remember, all of the mice that came out was black. So phenotype is black. Okay. And the mother is white or whichever one is white. Okay. If we have a look at this, the genotype for there would be big, oh, big B, small B, small B, small B. Remember, we've got the meiosis and everything. We're going to end up with this big B, small B end up with a small b, small b, and here we're going to have big b, small b, small b, small b, big b, small b, small b, small b, and the ratio is going to be, of the genotype, is 50% uh, big b, small b, and 50% small b, small b, or one, one big b, small b, to one, small b, small b. Hopefully I've got that all and you've all written it. Okay, and it is 50% black and 50% white. And I'm going to extend this page. There we go. White, which means we're going to have a ratio of one black to one white. That was easy, wasn't it? That was so cool. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Okay, all the ones that we've done so far, and if you have a look at this on the board here, all the ones we've done so far are complete dominance. It means the one completely dominates the other. So it says, when two individuals with purebred homozygous contrasting characteristics are crossed, the F1 generation will display the dominant character. In other words, if it's black and white and black is dominant, black will show in the second generation. Okay. The next one we're having a look at is incomplete dominance. This is a cool one. Okay. This is when you take, for example, a white flower and a red flower and you mix them and out pops a pink flower. Okay. So it means neither allele is completely dominated over the other. The offspring intimate, uh, integrates, or should I say, gets a little bit from each character and puts it in. Okay, so you get a red flower, you get a white flower, and in between you get a pink. And if you have a look at this one, you will see it. Um, there's a white flower, there's a red flower, and of course it makes pink, which is over there. Cool, that's a nice one. And then the last one I want to show you, okay, is your co-dominant. means they're both dominating all the time. They're sharing who's dominant, okay, and that means... Neither allele is completely dominating over the other. Genes have alleles of both expressions in the heterozygous individual. So in other words, if I take a black, or in this case, if I have a look at you, I take a blue fish and I take a red fish, and they mate, out comes a blue and red fish. Can you see? It's not like mixed together. It's straight blue and red. If I take a black cow and I take a white cow and I integrate them, you're going to get a black and white spotted cow. That's co-dominance. How cool is that? Okay. Now, let's see. I've got a couple of more examples for you, especially for this one. I want you to look at it. Okay. Very, very important. Let's see what we have here. Rabbits with brown fur, big B. Now, watch this. Look, look at the difference. We're crossed with rabbits with white fur, capital W. Ooh, now we know we have something to do with co-dominance. Okay. Now, watch. All the result offspring were cream. Ooh, represent a genetic cross to determine the possible genetic phenotype offspring in the F1 and the F2 
generation. Remember, then we're talking about inbreeding. I'm going to give you two minutes. Are you ready? Go. Let's have a look at the results that we got. We're going to go through this quickly, so you've got to listen. Okay, the phenotype of the parent, remember we said was brown, okay, brown, and the other one was white. White, okay, and we said that we were going to use capital W of capital B and the homozygous, and we're going to use capital W, capital W. Okay, then, yes, we can use W in this because there's no small letters. Okay, let's see. We create the gene, the, the, the gametes. So it's big B, big B. Okay, and I bring it down, and it's W and W. And I'm going to end off with all of them like that. Big B with Ws, big Bs with Ws. So it's 100% big B, small B, uh, big, big B, W, and it's, 100, 100 percent, and what did they say it was? The offspring all came out, let's see, cream. Okay, the offspring all came out cream, so it's cream. Okay, cool, and then of course you have your cream, bring that in, you have cream, uh, cream, and cream, and that means it's a big, that's a B, B and a W, and a B and a W. We cross them all together. It's B, W, B, W. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. what am I doing? Okay, B, W, and I'm going to get a big B and a big B. I'm going to get a big B and a W. I'm going to get a big B and a W, and I'm going to get a W and a W. How cool is that? So I'm just going to put percentage in this this time, so it goes quickly. Okay, so it's 25% uh, big B, big B, 50% um, big B, W, and I'm going to get 25% W, W. And I'm going to end off here with 25% um, what was it? Uh, black? No, it was brown, hey? Brown, 50% uh, cream. And the last one is 25% white. You all got that. I'm sure you did. Okay, so that is your codominant. Remember the codominant. Now, this one here is called your uh, that, that one was called your incomplete dominant. This is called your codominant. 
okay? Now, when it comes to blood, blood types, this is a very one. So I want you to have a good look at this, okay? And it is about two parents that got, they lost, lost their babies and they had to take their blood group, okay, to be able to do it. The nice thing about this is when we've got blood, you've got A blood group and you've got B blood group and you've got O blood group and you have AB. And I'm just going to put it there. Okay, look at this. A can be either AA or AO. B can be BB or BO. O can be OO, that's it. And AB can be AB. Now, just by using that, we're not going to have time for this. But just by using this, I can see you have a thing called dominant, complete dominant. So A is dominating O, B is dominating O. And then you get co-dominant. A, B, they dominate each other. Very, very important. This is a beautiful one. So make sure that you have a look at this. Try it at home. Let's see how you can do it. I know you will get this right. Remember, concentrate, do your step-by-step -step thing, and you'll be perfectly fine. We'll speak soon. Cheers.